Hi, I'm Lizzie and welcome to my floss tube. I'm talking cross stitch and sewing today. Um, I'm pretty tired. I've had two nights without sleep and I'll go into that in a minute. Um, I just want to say welcome everybody who is a subscriber and came back to see and welcome to some new subscribers who I'm pretty sure are from um, Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts that she gave me a really beautiful shout out and put my name up against some other fabulous floss tubers so um, thank you so much that was really nice um, so welcome 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 I have my notes to the side so because um, I have just too much to remember I just forgot to mention the photos in my intro video um, just some pictures of my garden, the finishes, and um, Japanese cherry trees, I think they are. And they're um, lining the driveway to my dad's, um, he's at a retirement village. And unfortunately, they've started cutting them down because they have um, uplifted all the footpaths. So um, the footpath can't be fixed anymore. So the poor trees, the, as beautiful as they are, are being cut down. And the bird singing in it is our native tui. Unfortunately, I got a bit of wind noise in there, but um, it was pretty amazing to get quite close. Um, usually they're fairly high up in the trees um, and they have a white feather under their chins. So they're known for that. So I um, just wanted to explain that. Okay, the I just want to say sorry for the last video I mentioned the Laura Duet pattern by Fox and Rabbit. I thought that it was a freebie. It was originally but now it is a paid pattern. It's still a really good pattern and I highly recommend you get it. It has a whole bunch of motifs that you could make small pillows out of for little gifts. Um, so definitely check that one out. Also um, I'm not that IT savvy but um, I think it was Floss Tube 4 I've always clicked on the floss tube videos when I set them up. I always click to hold the comments for reviews because I don't want any dickheads to go spaminating my um, videos. So, and that's to protect you guys. So, um, it seems to have been working well. I get email notifications and I respond. Um, but some, for some reason, on floss tube four, it just held all the comments back, and I didn't know, and I just thought that was. Like, I thought, oh, man, nobody commented. Maybe I didn't ask any questions. Um, so when I did stumble across that, I, it was about a month later, I went in and answered the comments. So I hope that had not happened to any of the other prior videos. I'm deeply embarrassed. Um, you must think I'm really rude if you, if, because I try and respond to every single comment. So um, I just wanted to say sorry for that and get that out of the way. Um, so I haven't had sleep for a couple of nights. It's been a really hectic week. We've had, um, okay, so we have some undesirables who live on our street and they caused a bit of mischief in the middle of the day and the police have been called um, and the neighbours, our good neighbours, we all got together and had a girly get together and a plan and um, it's just when someone comes on your property, it makes you very nervous. It isn't the first time this year that this has happened. Um, I have security cameras, which I think is a deterrent, but they're just troublemakers. So you've got that in the back of your mind. And then my dad um, took a sudden health decline yesterday. Oh, I actually lost track of the days. Um, I call, We called an ambulance because we didn't have a clue what it was. He's been ill for a little while and... Um, the immediate thing was he does not need to go to hospital, so that was good. He went through the night, we went, took him to the doctors. Um, it sounded like he had post-pneumonia, so the doctor was arranging for all the blood tests, and one of them has come back this morning and saying he's anemic, so I'm actually rushing to take him to the doctor straight after this and follow up. Hopefully it's nothing too serious, but it could be, who knows. So... Um, Oh, just a little worried about him. Um, but so my stitching, overall I've stitched less 
um because my daughter's got health problems at the moment as well it's just all on so but there is some exciting cross stitch to show you so let's see oh and another comment um from one of my previous videos i showed a picture of a plant that i have grown from my mum and someone identified it i think it was a dendrobium orchid and i think it's called my um oh did i write it down pink rock orchid i think that's what it is so a huge thank you to some person who loves orchids and recognized it that's amazing um let's see so i did olivia i shouted her out i just want to give a shout out to rosanna of nesta petals she is a floss tuber um highly recommend you watch her videos she is um doing going to be reproducing some patterns a samplers and her first one is a smallish one it has a cross in the middle with some flowers and i think it was two moths or butterflies either side and a very pretty border i believe her mum is stitching the model so i can't wait for that to come out hopefully as a pdf <laughs> if not i'll just have to order the paper coffee copy um and the name on the sampler is mary wilson aged 12. so go check her out she's lovely i just want to give a shout out to campbell of stitchy therapy um she gave me a lovely mention she is a bit of a hoot she has a great sense of humor um, and she likes my accent so hi <laughs> um i also want to mention again katie of so tattered you've probably heard her name quite a bit um, she loves quilting and sewing with a very primitive style i like that as well except that it's just hard to get those materials here um but she's lovely to watch and the duos i've been watching this week uh, linen and scraps kathy and molly hi and running with scissors Jane and Julie, who I only discovered a couple of floss tubes back. Um, very funny sense of humour. And um, I believe, I don't know who's who yet, I'm still learning. I think it's Jane likes Shepherd Bush. And Julie calls them something posh like Shepherd Bush. I guess because it's um, you know, a bit posh. So I'm going to call them Shepherd Boucher just because it sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah just a couple of shout outs um spring is slowly coming we've had a huge amount of rain huge amount of gale force winds it's very hot today but the um rain is supposed to be coming so it's going to be really humid um let's see i just also wanted to mention that i'm always going to have a blackbird segment blackbird designs um I definitely intend to keep on stitching blackbird designs that I have. Um, I will just slowly kit them up. As I finish one, I'll choose another one. Um, it's a bit like Anna from Stitch Roadie. She was doing the Prairie Schooler Santas. And she said, finish a Prairie Schooler, start a Prairie Schooler. Finish a blackbird, start a blackbird. So um, it makes sense. So I'm going to do that. So hopefully I will always have something blackbird designs to share and you've seen them all before but um it's always good to see what other people are stitching and i was going to do a video on the end of september but i forgot it was the school holidays <laughs> so i just skipped it and the weather was yuck so here we are okay so oh i've got to get one out just a second all righty here we go so i had one night where i did three starts I was doing a carol and decided to put a few stitches in I'm not actively stitching on these but I just put a few stitches in to start and um, I just wish I could get all these done before Christmas but there's no way that's going to happen so the first one is the Plum Street this is the day lots and lots of people have done that this year so I'm doing it on uh 36 count country vintage country mocha and the called for threads and i just made a start on the brickwork 
so little start there the next one was plum street summer moon hopefully the glare is not too bad with the bunnies i'm going to change the flag and probably the pinwheels to blue and white and i'm doing this this one's all the called for <laughs> i didn't do much i just got a green line <laughs> so it's a start um, and then the next one is Plum Street, this I know. And Rosanna, Nesta Petals, is stitching this as well. This one I'm doing all the called for, but on 35 count flax. And I just did the baby sheep, which are hard to see, but they'll get surrounded by green floss. And then they'll stand out so hopefully this will show up but i got three little baby sheep so it's a start okay let's see uh whips every opening flower by brenda Gervais. i did a little bit of this and did a little muck up this is all the called for and oh, pin needle okay so let's see hold it like that there we go so i finished the x did the little blossom flower above it then went up to the bird let's see if i can zoom in did all the flowers and this is where i made the little error um somewhere around the top of the bird I'm a half a stitch off from all of that. Was it there or was it there? I can't remember now. <laughs> but I'd done a lot of stitching. I think I'd done half the bird. No, that can't be right. I know I'd done the bird because I didn't want to unpick the bird. So maybe it was the flowers. So somewhere I'm half a stitch out, but I'm going to leave it because I don't want to rip all that out because it looks nice. And um, there is room under there to fudge it. So I'm fudging this one. I'm not being a perfectionist. <laughs> okay. My next whip is Blackbird Designs. This is going to take like five minutes. <laughs> okay. Strawberry Fields Forever. And um, I sort of got stuck because I can't find the, I think it's Tin Bucket. So I'm just using the blue DMC conversion that's in the pattern. And I had to go and buy that. So it got held up a little bit. And this is on, um, I think it's Vintage Antique. And this is two threads over two. And there we go. I just have to fill in two little stitches here. And then I just worked my way up. I did have to rip out what I had done. I did it all wrong. So um, I redid the, I had done half of the pot. So I redid that, redid the stem. So now I can just um, carry on wherever I want to carry on from. So it's a really nice stitch. I'm having no problems at all um, stitching that with two over two. It's going nice and smooth. Everything else so far has been one thread over two then i have got plum street a lot of plum street today this joyous season and i had fizzled out on this one and then i got back to doing a chunk of the fill in at the bottom and that's all i've done is fill in of that creamy snowy color behind the trees this is it in full. So I'm just doing a section at a time. Um, I was doing four or five threads a night, but then that slowed down. So I've missed a few nights. So I'm going back to one or two threads and it will it will get there. It's just like a marathon. We just keep running and you never reach the end. So but um once I get that done, I think I'll have a spurt of focus to push on and get it done because it'll be close to the end um 
Okay, the next one is the Chap Chapard Boucher Sew a Lot Stitch Along. Shepherd Bush. <laughs> oh, got a note in there. Okay, that, this was one, a stitch along that we're doing in our local group in New Zealand, for some of us. And I chose the all as well with the um, sheep. And this one I'm doing one over two. And I made some changes. So I'm using 32 count. I'll show you where I got. I've actually finished. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm doing one over two, 32 count light mocha. Um, the changes were, originally I was just going to use the DMC for the greens. A couple of the greens were just looking yellow, so I changed them. So, um, I'll just, I've got it written down. So for the Gentle Art Hyacinth, which I think was, these are meant to be like purple, and I wanted them to be pink. So I changed that color to DMC. 3687 Gentle Art Avocado. I think I changed it to 471. Gentle Art Piney Woods. I changed to 730. Um, the Weeks Linen. I changed to DMC 712. The Blackboard. I changed to the DMC 3799. And the Peppero pe Pepperoncini. I don't know how you say that. Um, I changed it to two different colours, 166 and 3012, um, so that I could have two different shades of leads on this particular plant instead of just all the one colour on that on that stem. And then Classic Colourworks Mossy, I changed to 3011 and 3012. Again, I changed it up a little bit for different parts. And then Weeping Willow, I changed to 3012. So, lovely stitch. And I learnt the pin stitch to do the little, um, the little forget-me-nots. Oh, the lighting is a bit blur. Back, is that better? You can't see it though. <laughs> so I learnt the pin stitch to start. Not entirely sure how to end a thread when you only have one or two stitches available to weave into. It makes it a bit bulky, especially when there's three different colours involved for the stem and the little tiny leaves. But um, So for this one, on the pattern, it's got these buttons here that you sew on from the Bee Company. So I did get some in the end, that's the little packet, and these are the buttons. There's two different size sheep, this is the big one, this is the little one, bah. <laughs> and a picket fence. So, um... I will stitch those on when I find a frame. I did have these ones that I was going to use, the um, just another button company ones, but they do look a tiddly bit small. So I'll probably go with the, um, the B company ones. So that's my shepherd bush cell, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Didn't take long at all. Um, and then in the weekends, I'm trying to do bees. So I counted that as... A bee stitch because it's got little bees on but I'm also doing little house needleworks um, honeybee sampling on 28 count lambs wool linen which is the really stiff it's really stiff I don't know who it's by and I'm gonna make changes so this is where I'm up to and I'm gonna rip some out <laughs> um, I changed the letters to DMC 420, which is fine. Um, everything else is called for, I think. I'm stitching two over two, and this this is a nice open weave, so it's really nice to stitch. Um, but once I'd done that, I realized that the beehive, the beehive looks a bit more yellow, gold, not just brown. My two browns 
that are the called for um it just looks like all one color so i'm actually gonna rip out the brown and the b which is whatever it is can't remember um and in the shepherd bush sale there is a week's dye works whiskey and i think i'm going to use that because it's a little bit more yellow i got that here yep these are the these are the leftovers from the shepherd bush so i have lots so i can do anything with that needs pink i've got pink so um this is the week's dye works whiskey so it's a lovely honey bee color so i'm gonna have a go at that and see if it comes out nice and do the beehive stripes with that and the brown and fingers crossed it will look good so there's my honeybee sampling so i'm just going to try and work on that in the weekends and i think that's my whips oh no one more okay so i was playing around with my leftover threads i pulled all my blue fancy floss out and I'll just haul this stuff over. I've got a higgledy piggledy pile and I dropped a thread. So I pulled out some free patterns. Uh, one is Blackbird Designs. Now I know my ABCs. And I'm just going to whiz it up so you can see it's an alphabet and numerals with my scribbles on of my changes. And I'm using a scrap of 36 count latte by Fibre on a Whim. And the called for has um, six different colours, like greens, browns, maybe a red. So I'm changing them all to blue. So I pulled out, I've got a little cheat sheet here because I've got three different projects. Um, classic Colourworks Blacksmith Blue. Classic Colourworks Old Money, Weeks Dye Works Pea Coat, which is like a, a greeny blue. It's more blue, but it's got a uh, green, yeah, bit of a green base to it. Um, Weeks Dye Works Blue Heron, uh, Classic Colourworks Old Blue Jeans, and then there's one more somewhere. Maybe that's the one I dropped. Uh, no, yes, no. Um, Classic Colourworks Wavy Navy, which is quite a nice variegated one, this one. Having trouble showing things today. Is it going to focus? Nope. <laughs> so anyway, a bunch of blues. <clears throat> and so I just allocated a symbol to a colour some of the letters have two colours in them, so they're not all just one blue. And this is where I'm up to. Oh, hang on. My pile's slipping. <laughs> okay, so this is where I'm up to. And it's just going to be a little pillow for a bowl. And these little things here, I think that's punctuation. So I just did them all in the same colour. It had two colours, but... I think it's a colon, a semicolon, full stop, and a comma. But um, I just thought that was a fun way to play around with the leftover blue threads. So that was one freebie pattern. And then I have printed off La Di Da, has several little smalls, alphabets. Um, this one's called Love Here, like that. It has little hearts. And let's see, for this one, where's my cheat sheet? Love you. I'm using 36 count oaken, unless, I need your help. <laughs> I have a big piece left over from my project. It's... Um, 36 count and it's about 10 to 10 and a half inches wide and it's longer so if you can think of a pattern that I could do on there that would be better use of the fabric um, let me know otherwise I will chop this up into a small pillow so that's for the fabric and then the threads I am using 
R. Where are they? They finished. Oh, no, here's one. Um, classic Colorworks Saint Bernard, which is, um, it's more of a mint, oh, a, it's kind of a green or a teal, not really teal, it's more of a green, a soft green. Um, so Saint Bernard, and the other one is Blacksmith Blue, I think. So I'm using this for the hearts and then the blue for the letters. So that will just be another little pillow to go with it. And then I've got another freebie. That's that one. La -dee da Letters and Leaves. And this is it here. And for, actually, I'll show you long enough so you get to see it. And I'll put the links, hopefully, in the description box if you want to go and check them out if you haven't, um, if you want to save these. Okay, so this one, Letters and Leaves, I'm using the Wavy Navy, the Classic Colourworks, and Classic Colourworks Deep Blue Sea. So that's going to go on a piece of 30 count, 30 count cocoa linen that I've got. It's just a scrap. Um... So that's, I'm hoping they'll all look good together. I've got it in my head, the vision. It's just whether the vision comes out. <laughs> and then I've got one more, which is la -dee da and it's alphabet with the hair. You probably might have seen this one before. And this one, I'm using a scrap of 36 count parchment by Weeks. And... I'm using Glacial Blue. I really like them, so fingers crossed they come out and look good together. Um, I've got blue suede here, can't remember what that was for. <laughs> Maybe that's a backup colour. <laughs> so that's just some, that was just a bit of fun playing around, looking for something small I could do that was easy and using up my leftover threads because I don't have a huge stash um, and then on to finishes well I'll do haul actually because it's very small where is my haul <laughs> I got a, a fluffy hand towel on sale to iron my cross stitch on because um, I've been using this wee little uh, cross stitch hand towel I've been using this for, <laughs> I've had it for about 20 years, I guess. My mum got it for me and I've never stitched on it. And it's a bit thin. It's pretty thin. So I really need to, um, it's got going a bit fluffy too now, like pilly. Um, so I upgraded it to a fluffy white hand towel. So that was exciting. I bought 45 DMC threads for my Teresa Kogut patterns that I bought recently. And then I just ordered some Gentle Art threads to top up. Um, I've got, well, I took some of my Blackbird patterns that I want to do because everyone's stitching fall in the US and I've got, I love autumn. So um, I went through and wrote down several of the projects and listed the threads. And then as I buy them, I can just tick them off. So I can look at the book and go, oh, this one just needs three more threads. I can start it if I get those. Or I just need a piece of linen and then I can, I'll can i have the threads. So I can just tick it off and go, yep, check. Um, so I did buy the gentle, some of the Gentle Art threads. And then I bought three skeins of um, Weeks Baked Apple. I don't know how many I need, but I thought I'd get three. Because of the Ooh La La book has a lot of the baked apple in it. So um, <laughs> um, I'm going to put this in a little plastic bag with the threads. And then I can just, um, when I'm ready, I can go through and find which ones they are. Find some linen or Ada or whatever I'm going to do and stitch a new project. So out of the Ooh La La book, I had a finish, which was the... Um, Uh, 
this piece of paper. That one there. This was for my sampler September. And it's my first um, red sampler and my first mini sampler, I guess. First red sampler. And I was going to hem stitch it. I watched a tutorial. It all made sense. I started when my family were home and I shouldn't have. And my threads, um, I pulled them out okay, that's fine. But when I went to weave them back in, they started shredding. I ended up with no thread left to weave back in. I didn't know how to fix it. And then I pulled a few wrong threads and mucked it up and ended up with half an inch seam allowance left. So um, I rescued it and turned it into a little... Uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like a quilted sandwich without the batting in the middle. So I just um, put a little border on it. Then I cut the backing the same size and put them right sides together, left a hole for turning, turned it out. And then um, I just stitched in the ditch and stitched around the outside. And that was with Cherry Cobbler by Classic Colour Works. And you have to watch the border on this one. It's it's not straightforward, <laughs> so make sure you count. <laughs> um, and that was on a piece of, that was one thread over two on 36 count parchment and I had dabbed the linen with tea bags before I'd started and let it all dry um, to give it a kind of an old look. And then someone was displaying on floss tube, someone was displaying a vintage box with cross stitch and vintage things and I can't remember who it was. I don't know if it was Colorado Cross Stitcher or Brenda and Laura or I can't think who else it would be. But I'm sure that they showed like a wooden box and they had little cross stitch things in and then they had like vintage postcards and vintage buttons and whatever else it was. So I thought that would be nice, a nice way to display it and just peg it, peg it on the top of the box. Or um, I'm trying to get my husband to find some chicken wire to back like a an old frame or a cheap frame and do a chicken wire sort of pegboard and then just use a little wooden peg and peg it on and then at the bottom of that hopefully we can find a tray where we can screw it on and then I can fill the tray with the little little red work things like needle cases or um, that's my that's my vision for this is to somehow display little red work things all together um, and so because of the vintage vibe that I saw, um, I was trying to think, right, what have I got this old? So I sent my husband up into our roof where we have stuff stored and I'll just lean and get it. I have this beautiful old prayer book that I picked up um, years ago. And it's black leather, which is pretty worn. See, you see that? There you go. It's ever so tiny. It has gold edging on the pages. One page has fallen out. Um, which is the front? This is the front. This is the front. Just a little black book. And then on the inside, this is ever so sweet. I mean, you can see the damp. Um, the damps got to it before I got it. Um, oh, it is upside down. <laughs> and somebody's put a little bit of writing on the last page. I don't know what it says, but somebody wrote 1917. I can't read what's next to it. Maybe you can. And it's got little prayers in it. Oh, which way am I showing? That way? Um... What are the, uh, uh, occasional meditations, daily self-examination, prayers. Um, oh, look what I just found in the middle. I didn't know that was there. It's got a little... Oh, how cool is that? I did not know that was in there. Wow. Nothing on the back. It's stuck in there. Um, 
morning prayers, Saturday prayers, <laughs> Monday prayers. Look at that. Really cool. Um, what's at the front? What does it say? Preparatory considerations and a preface. And it's called, oh, here we go. A companion for the altar. So neat. Does it say London? Yeah, London. Salisbury Square. Um, oh, here we go. Look at that. Check this out. Check this out. 1860. Look at that writing. Oh, ink pens, dudes. That is just so cool. I have no idea what that name is. Is it Cecil? Mm. I cannot read that. Winter, W-Y-N-T-E-R. 1860. So this book, when I first got it, I looked up the book and tried to find some research on it. And it's not dated, so normally they have a publication date, and this doesn't have the publication date, which means it was prior to books requiring a publication date. So that I can't remember where that info was, but I might try and find it again. But that's going to go. Just it's just such a cool thing, so I'm going to put that in my little display. Um, okay, so finishes rolling on, rolling on. Where's my pattern? Blue work pears. This was fun. I used Dinky Dye Silk, the called for, one thread over two on, oh, what did I use? I think, oh, I think it was the 36 count latte, fiber on a whim. And I made my pairs. I watched the Vonna Pfeiffer Twisted Stitcher tutorial. Excellent. Um, I didn't stuff them as much as her, but I should have. And then I liked the we went walking and found a stick and we cut a stick up to go on top. So here's one. This was my first one I did. And this fabric that I found, I think it's a Liberty print. Might be Blossom, might not be. But I'm pretty sure it's a Liberty print. So I just used that on both sides. There's the, there's the top, which I haven't glued it in. I've just stuck it in. I need to think about adding a leaf and then I just used a piece of wool on the bottom because it was a bit messy under there. Bit messy. <laughs> okay, number two was this one, the alphabet. Really cute. Same thing with the wool and the stick. And then this is number three. Super cute. I think I did pretty good for a 3D dimensional pair. I've done other pairs, but not quite like this. Um, and I'm glad it turned out good. Because <laughs> it's always terrifying cutting your fabric. So that was a successful finish. And then, um, hat in hand, Seaside Tiny Town one there. I felt like spring was coming and needed some beachy type um, stuff to stitch. So I did these little pillows like I was totally inspired by Primrose Cottage Primrose Cottage Stitches, Emily. She did these so I copied her fabric uh, for the linen, oh not linen, Lugana, 28 count Luganas and mushroom, ice blue, I think it was antique white and wheat and I changed my colors so I am not using the called for threads um, I changed some of them most of its DMC but I think I selected four or five of the blues for the um, fancy floss so um, and I did add Dublin Bay and I think so this is one I just oh well, maybe I'll, I wonder if I can do this. Show you. I put them in a white tray and 
I tip them over? Yep, there they are. So it's on my coffee table at the moment before Christmas starts. <gasps> okay, so this is one. Just scraps of fabric I had. I attempted to make two color cording, which is okay, it's not perfect, but that's that one. I used this wavy print on all the back of them. I don't know what it is, but I think Emily's came out perfect. And this one. So we just divided the pattern up and just stuck a bit of rickrack in that one. This one reminds me of a fish and chip shop. <laughs> It's got the little, it's a bit hard to see, it's got little fish hanging in the window. I like that one a lot. And then we've got, this one came a bit wonky, <laughs> the three houses. I've got my seam allowance marked up, but I'm just going with it. It's just for a display. Um, this little scraps of fabric. And this one is the pelican. I just did like a fake binding. And I just tied, this was pre-made twill twine tape. I did fray check the end of the um, rope so it doesn't fall apart and just sewed that on. So that's my little seaside finishes. And let's see. The only other thing I'm doing is... Um, secret stitching so the New Zealand group Facebook group they said did anyone want to do a Christmas swap I haven't done one before so I didn't think about it I just jumped on and signed up and then I thought I'll worry about the pattern afterwards and I've chosen well I chose a pattern and I realized it was too much stitching so I swapped it out for a different pattern I don't know who I'm swapping with yet and so I can't show you that, but I'm working on that. And I put together a couple of little extras to pop in with the gift. So I can't show you that until um, after they get it, I guess. So that's one thing I'm doing that I can't show. And then I'll just show you my sewing. That's all my cross stitch. I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry if it's not all, I'm not all there today and my mind is distracted. I'll just get my sewing one second. Okay, so I went into my Benina shop to look for some fabric for the tiny town pillows. To I can't even remember if I bought anything there from that. But I walked in and they had a bag on display that a lady had made. It's a buy Annie bag called A Place for Everything. And I just fell in love with it and said, could they fit me into a class? And they said they could. So I decided to try and choose as much fabric as I could from the shop to support them. And I decided to go with a blue theme. And then I did change my mind a few times and I did order some fabric from another shop because I really wanted that for the outside. I just, it had to be a bag I had to love. So I did tweak it a bit. Um, but I made it and it's finished and it stores some of my cross stitch smalls. So, this is a bit springy, really. So, this is my bag. It took a good week to make, and it wasn't... We did adapt the pattern. Ad, ad, did I say that right? Adapt the pattern to make it easier. So, we did make some changes, but I decided I wanted a hexi on the front. I machine stitched it. Um, I love this fabric. It's like watercolour. This is a Liberty fabric. That's the one I had to buy in. This is a gorgeous sort of um, woodland fabric. It's got it's got uh, bees, acorns, is it showing butterflies, pink flowers. I'm not worried about it getting dirty because I'm not going to take it anywhere dirty. The back, oh, and this so it's got this big carry strap. In the back or the front, this is actually the front. I did this with a different hexi on the other side. First time I've used the buy any zips, a bit pricey but very, very nice. So I've got a pocket in there, slip pockets in there for if I want to carry pens or whatever. 
and then the main thing opens up and it has like pages in it that you can take out okay so and it's just held together with a velcro strap um so we added fabric to the zips which is not in the pattern um so we did had to do less measuring that way it was just a bit easier and it came out nice and i got to use up all the scraps of my fabric so um let's see so i've got two little pockets here on the back of that i put a belt a uh, vinyl pocket then <laughs> this is huge this side i've got a vinyl pocket This side, I've got a mesh zipped pocket. And if you can see, Robin does, she had done really, oh, that's Robin, the owner of the shop. She had done a sample case as well. And she'd done um, like your fancy stitches on your sewing machine onto the zip. And hers look far better than mine, but um, I gave it a go and it's really neat. Then on the back cover, you've got um, a zip in a mesh pocket that's my interior fabric which i need to trim some threads and then on the other side i think it's just yeah this side is just a velcro slip pocket so i've just got some patterns in there and then this one is a mesh pocket so what Oh, and then there's more pockets, more pockets, pockets everywhere. I think it's really cool. Um, because, so I've got my floss rings in the small pockets and I've got a little tag saying what they belong to. So I think I have four small pockets in total. So I can have four sets of rings, floss rings. And then I have my little I've started using these little index cards to make all my notes so that has details like ch changes and things that I've made and then on the other side I can have my pattern and the fabric so this one I've got um, scattered seed samplers I still haven't done it I've got the DMC and I've got a little scrap of fabric which is country mocha I think or vintage antique um, I've got quite a few autumn ones in here. Not everything is kitted up, but it's all in one place and it looks pretty and it makes you want to play with your patterns and stitch. So, um, and it just zips up. So if you were traveling places, um, I think Teresa Kogut was given one in her fabric line and she had, um, she could squish her halo go in the back. Oh. So I presume that it would fit in. I don't have one of those. Um, I'll just zip it up. But yeah, really cool for traveling. Like if you want to take a whole bunch of stuff. I don't go to retreats because there are not that many around here. But there are some, but they're not nearby. Um, but yeah, it's pretty sturdy. I've got quite a bit of weight in this and it's handling it just fine. It's not falling out the bottom or anything. So yeah, really, really pleased with that. I've got one more thing I'll show you next time. I want to do a video of my little trolley setup. Okay, so Brenda and Laura, the serial starter. Brenda, was it Brenda? Brenda was reorganizing her patterns onto the IKEA Razcog trolley carts. And I put a question on their video and I said, oh, I'd love to see how you've got it set up. And whoever, I think it was Laura might have answered, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was Laura. And she said, um, well, that'll be a bit hard because the trolleys are downstairs and she can't bring them up. And she says, imagine a trolley with, you know, <laughs> imagine the trolley. Like, I know what the trolley looks like. <laughs> I felt a bit dumb, but I wanted to see how the patterns stood up, how she had them set up in the trolley. Like, just are they standing or are they in bins in the trolley? It doesn't matter anyway. I was just being nosy. So, um, my little trolley I use as my stitching base, basically. Wherever I stitch, I've got my trolley. And it's got my, um, my I can stick my patterns in there, my project bags. Um, I've got a 
oat container thing for my scraps so um next time i'll try and show you how i use that and what i've changed in it to make it better so um you can look forward to that next time so that's about it i'm going to head off and rescue my dad get some lunch as well um thank you so much i'm sorry about the lighting i might try spin the camera next time see if it's any better um still working on that <laughs> so i hope that you are all well take time for yourself get some stitching in and i shall see you next time bye Thank you.